What is going on today? I am on the boat with Vic and our friends Johnny and Laura and tonight we are going yellow tailing We got out here a little bit early It's just four o'clock and we're gonna try to catch some bait before the Sun goes down We did an anchor We just tied up to an anchor ball in 40 feet getting the chum out and hopefully we'll start getting some ballyhoo back here We did bring squid for bait just in case we can't catch any fresh bait so We've been set up with the chum in the water for I don't know ten minutes only and we have speedos at the boat already so we're gonna use little chunks of squid and we're gonna try to catch some of these speedos and normally when you get speedos in your chum slick it's kind of a fast thing they don't usually hang out forever so you want to catch them as soon as you can we got these little gold hooks and i just put a little tiny piece of squid on there and johnny already caught one they're pretty fired up so hopefully oh he just caught another look at all these speedos got them brookie Woo! all right so this is what we're after. These are Speedos. You swallowed it. Let's see if we can get them unhooked. So this is a Speedo, otherwise known as a fire tail because they got those red tails. These make excellent bait. We got, I don't know, four of them already in the live well. We're gonna actually use them probably all for cut bait tonight. So technically we don't really need to keep them alive, but Victor wants to use these as live baits in a future video. So he's trying to see how well they do in the live well tonight, kind of to just no, for future reference. Got him, Ricky. Woo! Double, double ladies. Ah! <laughs> Laura almost got me right in the face with hers. Because <laughs> I went to take my rod back and I hit Vic. Oh, I got a peewee. Triple. Woo, triple. <laughs> So all these delicious speedos that we caught, we're gonna make into our yellowtail bait. So I just basically kind of flayed them and then this chunk's about this big for yellowtail. Like that, perfect. That's huge. No, no, that's a nice size yellowtail chunk. You want a little yellowtail or you want a big yellowtail? So we have 15 pound liter and we're using these 16th ounce jig heads. And what we're gonna do is just hook on a piece of that Speedo that Vic just cut up for us. And I'm not sure if we're gonna stay here to um, Yellowtail yet. This is, we're still in the same place where we have been catching the Speedos. Johnny, are in, Johnny and Laura are still even catching Speedos, but I wanna put out a Yellowtail bait to see if the Yellowtails are here or if we're gonna have to move. So let's see what happens. All right, as you guys can see, the sun is going down. It's about five, almost 5.30 now. We caught a bunch of Speedos, but Laura and I tried to catch Yelltails and didn't really have any luck. So we're actually gonna pick up and move, head north and try a different spot. Maybe go a little deeper, not really sure yet. So let's get moving. Just moved, like Brooke told you, to a, a new spot, and we're gonna put in a new batch of chum because this one's running a little bit low. And just like that. I'm gonna toss it over the side. Hopefully, the yellow tail show up for us. What do you think, Johnny? I think it smells fishy here, so that's usually a good sign, right? <laughs> I think that's that's this right here, Johnny. <laughs> Oh, did we both get cut off, Brooke? You know what? We did. Brooke and I both just got cut off. First fish means there's some toothy fish around, probably some mackerel or kingfish. I did I like just fish. get cut off, but I'm putting my bait out, and what I'm doing is I have my bail open, and I'm just, there's not a lot of current, but I'm kind of just letting the current take the line off my spool, and I'm gonna just let the line feed off and what we're looking for is when we hook a yellowtail, the line is gonna rip off your spool, then close your bale and reel in your fish. So that's what we're waiting for, which just happened, but then it got cut off. So like Victor said, it was probably something toothy, but we're basically just waiting for that bait, that bite to come. Just letting the line come off the spool nice and naturally. Cause you just want your bait to kind of, oh, look, look at that. Just like that. You are the best. 
We haven't been, since we've moved, we haven't been here for more than, I don't think, 10 minutes. We'll see what our first fish is gonna be at the new spot. Ooh, that's a good one, bro. I don't think it's gonna be a yellowtail. It's finding kind of like a blue runner. You got yourself, I don't know. He's, that's interesting. He's not an omicro. He's got a very short dorsal fin right there. It's most likely a lesser amberjack, which are pretty common on the near shore reefs. I wasn't expecting to catch that. <laughs> hey, you broke the skunk off the boat, though, yep, babe. There we go. Good job. See, I wonder if that's what we hooked before, but maybe, maybe just got cut off. Cool thing about him, he's got like little nubs for pectoral fins. You see that? They have really small pectoral fins. Let's unhook him. Let him go. Something that we're also kind of fighting with tonight, we definitely do not have the best conditions, is the wind is blowing this way, but the current's going this way. So ideally you wanna fish off the back of the boat and have your lines going at the back of the boat into the current, but that's not what's happening and our line is going towards the front of the boat, which is definitely not ideal, but we're dealing with it. The wind's a little stronger than that. Oh, look at that. Got him, babe. Oh, How am I way down here already? <laughs> what I was saying is the wind is definitely stronger than we thought it was gonna be tonight. What are you looking? Hey. Like under the boat towards the front. Sorry. Can you shine out there to see if I need to go under the anchor ball? Oh, I'm wrapping the anchor ball on We're doubled up. You could film Brooke. Okay. It's gone, Brooke. I have to go under the finger line. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let her hand Can the rod pull, to you. Pull up the line. You're underneath it. You got it. I got it. Good save, Brooke. See, as I was saying, this is not ideal to be fishing at the front of the boat like this. I still might even get wrapped in that anchor ball. I just caught a little mutton snapper right there. We're gonna let him go. I'm wrapped in the anchor line. You're wrapped, bro? On the anchor ball line. Are you over or under? I'm on the anchor ball line. Oh, just put this on. You like it? You see him? Yeah. Well, here, let me pull the boat to here, pull, the pull, pull the line. Oh, it came out, it came out. It's a big mutton. Oh, oh my nice. God, get the net, get the net. Oh my gosh. No freaking way. No freaking way. Yeah. Oh <laughs> no way. I was just all tangled up in the anchor ball and I was like, don't even bother filming me, Johnny. I'm definitely gonna lose this fish. Look at that. You have been on a mutton tear, girl. Holy moly! Brookie caught a big old mutton at the Keys Bridge the other day, and here she is showing us up with a big old mutton Heck, on the yellowtail rod. What a stud! Heck yeah! I literally had to go under the anchor line. Laura pulled up the anchor line for me so I could go under the anchor line, got wrapped up in the line of the anchor ball, didn't think I was gonna get it. Somehow got untangled from that anchor ball line. Heck yeah! <laughs> Whatever line this is, big what line is this? This line is great. <laughs> Look at that stud. Second fish of the night for me. Haven't even caught a yellowtail yet. Already caught this giant mutton. Woohoo! Good job, Rick. That is incredible. And you fought him like a champ. There we go. Beautiful mutton. 22 inches. 22 inches, baby. Wow. It's definitely not every night that you go yellowtailing that your first fish in the boat is a stud mutton snapper before you even catch a yellowtail. That is success. <laughs> I'm stoked. Let's see. See, look at those teeth. And you see the jig head in there? I'm so surprised that I landed that fish. Woohoo! I couldn't think of a better way to start a yellowtailing trip. To start it off with a 22 inch mutton. My dad, when we left the dock, he goes, I hope you catch a big mutton. I thought to myself, oh, we don't usually catch big muttons when we're yellowtailing. There you go, dad. <laughs> First fish in the cooler. 
Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, just leave that one in the This feels like it could be another mutton. Come on, baby. All right, Johnny, let's go up here because I'm kind of feeling like I'm in the edge line. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm on the ball. I can feel that this line is right here on the anchor ball. Let's see if it'll come out. Oh, he's out. He's out, he's, he's, out. Out. he's, he's out. out, he's out. It's another one. It's another mutton, Brooke. Let me get the net. No. Here, here, I'll net it, I'll net it. Oh, it is another mutton. It's a big, big mangrove. Big mangrove. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. What was following it? I think what you almost those? just, no, you almost netted a, uh. Laura's on too. Oh my gosh, this is nuts. Uh, no. Puck pulls. Uh, it looks like an AR. Stud Mangrovic. What is going on? Wow. You guys, I this is like some full moon shenanigans going on out here. Full moon, two days after it. Beautiful babe right here caught a 22 inch mutton. Another like 20 inch mangrove right here. We're fishing real lightly at only 30 feet of water. And this is the first two fish in the boat. This is gonna be an epic night, I can already tell. We still haven't even caught our yellow tail yet. No. <laughs> this is 12 pound mono straight. Look at the jig, jig head all the way in his throat. He was hungry for it. And same thing, my fish wrapped me in the buoy too, Brooke. That's what's gonna happen with this tide going the different direction as the wind. Pretty crazy, guys. You got blood all over your face. Ah. Are you okay? Yeah, no, the, the um, you should film this. The, I was trying to unhook this, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, the line is through my tooth. He's flossing me. <laughs> it literally went like in between my teeth. <laughs> this might be our yellow tail. Or maybe a blue runner. I'm on. Oh, what on earth is it? What is it? A, a blue fish? Is it a blue oh, fish? That's what's been biting us off. Oh, look at it. It's a school blue fish. Oh, God, cut me off right there. You see the blue fish yeah. swimming around? I just retied that. Bluefish, that's what's cutting us off. Toothy bluefish. So since we're using 15 pound leader and a lot of these fish are really toothy, I'm retying almost every single time because our leaders are getting frayed. And you wanna take the time to retie because if you don't bother and then you end up losing a fish because you didn't take the five seconds it takes to retie, you'll be really sad. So even if you just have a little bit of a fray, Take the time to retie. Did we just catch our first yellowtail? Oh, no, blue fish. No, it's a senator. Gosh darn it. Those blue fish. You got a cold front, that's why. Cutting us off. You got something good? I don't know. Oh, Laura. There we go. Blue fish. Jesus! <laughs> right when they get to the top. I know, right when they get to the surface, they cut you off. <laughs> I was trying to be gentle with them too. That I got. One. One, I probably got one too. These things are crazy, huh? Look, like they're trying to attack, attack each other. Yeah, Do you want the net? Can you see that in the light, Johnny? No. Do you want me to net it? First one we get in the boat because it finally got hooked right. <laughs> well, I, was gonna net it. <laughs> I tried flipping it and it the hook pulled, but at least I got my hook back. This is 100% a blue fish. I wonder if you caught a yellowtail if the blue fish would attack it. Probably. Finally landed our first blue fish. That's because he got hooked perfectly so he couldn't cut me off. But they are toothy. This leader is all frayed up still. But I'm not gonna, oof, he almost got me. It's what you call a snap of blue. I'm not gonna bother keeping this thing. But the blue fish are definitely around. The weather's getting a little cooler and the blue fish are here. Go. 
bluefish at night trying to yellowtail. <laughs> This is a really cool species. I don't know if you guys are picking up in the camera, but these are also called glass eye snapper. And you can actually see your reflection in their eyeballs. And you can see they have a really big pupil, which indicates they're nocturnal fish. Um, they're usually hidden up in rocks. We see them actually diving for lobster and they're always hidden during the day. And at night they come out really cool looking. And uh, one of the bycatches you catch while yellowtail snapper fishing. Got another one. Oh, do you? They're towards the bow. Wow. wow. There you go. Get him in. Flip them in. We made your all your wildest dreams come true tonight. You caught three of a fish. I have you've caught never three caught. of a fish I've never caught tonight. What are they called? The glass eye snapper? Glass eye snapper, glass eye toro snapper. snapper. Oh, on. Probably another blue fish. You're the only one able to land one, bro. That's the only way we land them, when they're hooked perfectly like that. Or else they cut you off. I'm due for another bluefish video, but tonight's not the night, so he's going home. I really? am the Toro Queen. Yes, you yeah. are. Yes, you did catch it. Wow. So it does not feel like it's on real. Good job, Laura. Oh man. Oh, that's all you got left. Laura used the same bait to catch her last three of these. This is her fourth one and three of them came on the same bait. This feels better than a Toro. A bluefish? Probably. A bluey. Oh, I broke my streak, but that was the same bait. Oh wait. It's another one. Are you is that really? joking? Another one oh, that's a Toro. on the same bait. This one you hooked a lot better. That one's way more right. Okay, so that was the your fourth one on the same bait. Fourth one on the same bait, and I still have my bait, so we're gonna send it back out. <laughs> the chunk of bait she was using was like five times larger than this, but she keeps just using this little tiny piece. We're gonna keep going. <laughs> Maybe that's the ticket. The bluefish want the big chunks and they don't care about the little stuff. Another one. That's her fifth one. Crazy. <laughs> big old bluefish. Is it? Yeah. I'm surprised you. He's come up as far as he has. Very elusive. Did I finally lose my bait? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not gonna look for it in this bluefish's mouth. And you lost your streak of catching. I did. There is your bluefish, Laura. <laughs> Have you caught one of these before? No. Oh, so well, you got two. Well, I mean, two. I've caught a few, just not. Red fish and blue fish. One and fish one and fish two, two fish. fish. <laughs> the thing I got, a glass eye snapper. It's not a blue fish. It's not fighting enough to be a blue fish. It's a, oh, it's Aww. a baby oh. mutton. Lane. Oh, it's a lane. A There's new a, species. a new species of the night. I can't even tell you about him. I just dropped him in the water. I think I got another little lane snapper. Yep. Found the lane honey. I can show you guys this time. These are, oh, Bricky's got one. Look at that. They're a lot more yellow and red. You see, they don't really have that green or blue like a mutton snapper has. It's about the average size you catch too. Oh, I caught one too. <laughs> Another lane. So we went from catching um, bluefish and Laura's Glass eye snappers, so now catching little baby lanes. I'm back on the Tora or glass eye snapper. Yes. Another one. Game. I got yep. another one. And I kept my bait. That's a big one. Yeah. Oops. Sorry, I lost your bait. <laughs> I'll survive. <laughs> I just caught another species of the night. This is a porgy. I believe it's a jolt head porgy. If it's not, I'll write on the screen what it is, but new species in the boat. Every single time we cast up towards the bow of the boat, it's just on like Donkey Kong, baby. Look at this. Oops. Another one. Johnny was asking me, do we normally catch this many when we're snapper fishing? And 
I can't ever tell you if we've ever caught this many. I think normally we catch like two or three, but these are just some funky looking fish, man. I'm in the video too, I'm just filming. <laughs> Laura finally caught the first yellowtail of the it's night, delicious. but it's not really large, so she's gonna let it go. But I got another one of these guys. <laughs> Live action, folks. Live action. We what finally we got, got here? Johnny catching a fish on video. Another little lane snapper there. Oh, let's go this way. Same thing, just another lane snapper here. Oh, I got a yellowtail. Do oh, you? Yellow oh, both of you got yellowtails. Yep. Finally, the target species. Double header yellowtails. These are really small, but um, yeah. maybe this is a sign that they're showing up. What do you guys think? Could be. It's the sign of the times. Maybe so. Mine's a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> she always outfishes me. It's okay. It might be a slight bit bigger. No, it's not. It is. We're back to the lane snappers here. But it's. I mean, we're catching fish every every few seconds. I mean, as soon as I as soon as I can get it to the bottom, I get a fish on. Down deep, Laura. It's down there. I got a bite though. It's kind of just sitting. Oh. I got the net, Johnny. That's a good fish. Just keep him oh, away from Laura, that buoy. No. Ooh, nice one. Cool. That's another mutton right there. Enjoy it. Really? Yeah. Enjoy it. I would say big mutton or mangrove. Enjoy it. Nice and easy. Oh, I see it. What do you think it is? It's going to be a good yellowtail. A good mangrove. <gasps> oh, yeah, baby. Bring her nice in. Nice mangrove, Laura. Wrap with somebody. Good job. I think I'm wrapped with you. I'm wrapped with you. Oh, wait. No, I'm wrapped with Johnny. Laura, where's the excitement? Yay! I'm excited. Look at that. Hello. Let's bring her in. That is by far the biggest mangrove I've ever caught. That's a keeper, right? Oh, Heck yeah. yeah. Hey. Good job, Laura. Thanks. We can get it out of the net. We're at that point in the night where it's like, do we move spots because it kind of got a little bit slower, but that's just because we weren't getting bluefish after bluefish, but we've just been catching small snappers. <laughs> and then Laura just brought in this stud mangrove snapper. Her biggest mangrove snapper she's ever caught. She's uh, knocking some things off her bucket list tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a beautiful big mangrove snapper, so good job. Thanks. It's not as impressive as Laura's or Vic's, but that's a nice size mangrove. We've been letting all the smaller ones that we've caught go today. But this one, this one will go in the cooler. Let's see what we got here. It looks like another mangrove. Probably just a little bit smaller than what you want to keep. They have very sharp um, fins on the top there, like any, like most fish. Pop that little jig right out. Can you see the uh, moon in the background? Yes, you can. It looks can like you? a little it's baby like M&M. Like a little pumpkin? Yeah. It's kind of slow fishing, like at least slow putting fish in the cooler fishing. We're catching a bunch of small fish that we're throwing back. As far as like, Wanting it to be a yellowtail fishing night, that is definitely not the way it's going. We haven't put one yellowtail in the cooler, but we are having an incredible night of fishing. Big Just mangrove. Just very different than what I was expecting it to be like. She has a big mangrove. You got the net? A mutton. Mutton. Not gonna be a piece of them. You could flip that one, he's hooked good. You said 18 for a mutton? Yes. All right, so they gotta be 18. It's 16. Another beautiful mutton snapper though. Amazing night of fishing. She's going home. See ya. Oh, bluefish, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Game over. All right guys, it is the next day. It is time to fillet up our fish and it's not every day that you get to fillet up a nice big mangrove snapper like this. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys on video today. And I'm gonna use this Dexter seven inch flexible fillet. And let's get to it. So we had a ton of fun fishing last night. It kind of started to slow down a little bit and the blue fish came back and we were like, that is our sign to go home. We had enough fish for dinner already so we had spent enough time out there, so we came home. And now we're gonna flay up these fish and I'm gonna make them up for dinner tonight. As always, you guys can save 
on DexterOutdoors.com on any of these knives with my code BROOK20. even have to change knives. There we go. Beautiful. A lot of cat. Cut out those pin bones, and you have a fillet that is ready for the kitchen. All right, guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So we have our fish all prepared. Tonight we're having a mix of mutton snapper, mangrove snapper. I think there's like one lane snapper mixed in, and then some of the toro snapper as well. So. We got a mix of everything. I don't know if we're gonna be able to tell what is what when it comes time to eat it, but let's get to seasoning. So the plan tonight is I'm going to bake these. I'm gonna start out with some olive oil, but I'm gonna bake them directly on this tray, and then I'm gonna make a sauce on the side that when it's finished, we're gonna pour over top. Give our fish a little massage. Now that our fish is all massaged and oiled up, and hit them with some salt. And then pepper. Next, we're going in with some garlic powder. And lastly, paprika. And that's it on the fish, and these are gonna go in the oven at 350. Because I have the fish on two baking sheets, and I'm also gonna bake the asparagus, we kind of really overcrowded this um, sheet of asparagus, so we'll have to move these babies around as they're cooking, but this is some branch and vine garlic infused olive oil. Really, really delicious stuff. So we got some of that, and then I'm just gonna do salt and pepper on them. So to start on our sauce, we got some butter in this pan and now we're gonna add in three shallots. So our shallots have cooked down a little bit, now we're gonna add in some garlic. And while that's cooking a little bit, we're gonna put our fish in. Some quick movie magic, we just uh, moved the shelves around. And I think that these are all probably gonna take around 20 minutes. So I think the asparagus and the fish are gonna be done at like the exact same time. So here we go. Okay, so now up here, it's time for our wine. So the wine has reduced. And now we're gonna add in these halved cherry tomatoes. Some salt, pepper. Next thing going in is heavy cream. And the last thing we're doing is adding some basil. Okay, I lied. The last thing I'm doing is adding some Parmesan cheese.
everybody. It's time. I heard this is amazing, Brooke. Mm -hmm. I've only had one bite, but it's definitely amazing. Delicious. Okay. Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna take a line from Debbie Chris because you know what? This is the best way to describe this meal. Two thumbs up, 10 out of 10. Asparagus, rice pilaf, everything went well together. Beautiful sauce, fish cooked to perfection. And it was nice that we got to try a different variety of fish. Some people had mutton, some people had mangrove, and then everyone got a little bit of the toro. And those toros are pretty good. Um, a lot of people don't know about them, but I give them two thumbs up. I'm not a big guy, I don't usually finish my plate, but um, that sauce was out of this world. I love rice pilaf, love all the snapper, the toro was cool. Mm, different texture, it was more firm. I agree with Victor every, and everybody, 10 out of 10, two thumbs up. Thank you. Laura? I mean, I cleaned two plates, so I, uh, I think it's safe to say it was amazing. Thank you. I agree with everyone. It was delicious. Um, I don't know what kind of fish I had, but it was so good. It's moist and tasty. Uh, great sauce. Beautiful. Nice presentation. Delicious. Thank you. Thank you. When Brooke was leaving the dock last night, I requested a mutton snapper, and she caught a, a nice big mutton snapper. However, the way they had them filleted up, I couldn't tell you if I had, you know, one of the bigger mangroves or the mutton, but it was delicious with that sauce. The, the rice was delicious. Every, everything was great. And then I tried a, a toro for the first time in my life. I mean, I've always thrown those back. I just didn't know anybody ate them. And it was nice white meat, different texture than the snapper, but it, it ate just fine. It was a good job, bro. Thank you. In the video, I said that you requested a mountain flower. <laughs> I thought you would have put it aside for me and say this is for dad, but no, nope, they all looked alike, so I don't know what I had. You know, it was, it was good, whatever it was. Well, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, I, you, couldn't, you couldn't critique that if you tried. It was really that good. Just fresh snapper and great recipe. So good job. Thank you. I have to agree with everybody. Um, same sentiments. For me, I'm just always excited to get invited because 10 out of 10 times, it's always gonna be a better meal than whatever I was gonna cook, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rick. nailed it. Thank you. I normally think that sauces are slightly intimidating, but this one was very easy and it turned out really good, so I'm actually very proud of it. You guys should definitely give it a try. It really takes your fish from like, you know, just something normal to like really top notch. So give it a try, it was very simple, really delicious. I had a ton of fun fishing with Johnny and Laura. If you guys don't know, Johnny has his own YouTube channel. It's Johnny Stabile. I'll have a link in the video description. You guys can go check him out, give him a follow. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.